Glory, 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 glory. Jezebel, if you aren't out of town yet, this spiritual town that we're on on this community, True. you better get your bags packed now because we're coming against you now. This is Pastor Doug with Cross and Blood. We're opening up Ustream in Jesus' name. Going to have a little bit of our fill of the old-time religion that knows how to fast, knows how to pray, and knows how to put our foot on the devil. Don't go anywhere, Ustream. We're just timing it together with Blog Talk radio we're about to come at you devil jesus name jezebel goodbye listen to old time religion glory well give me that old time religion i'm talking about religion that religion i used to have that old time religion lord hallelujah good enough for me that Enough for me in the school, I'm all out of silence. Well, it helped them when in their trouble. It will help you when you're dying, Lord. Hallelujah, good enough for me. My old time religion, I'm talking about religion. going to pray in the spirit till blog talk opens up in the name of Jesus. Shanda Larry, any questions about praying in the spirit? Go to crossandblood.com. You stream lots of information about it. Yes, we will have interpretation if you stay on the line or keep on tuned. Shanda Larry, Baki, don't go anywhere in Jesus' name. Kanda Larry, Bakatatai. Lord, get them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, just follow the the, the river in Jesus' name, on down to the people whose belly you are in already, and light the fire today. Hallelujah. Will be live in five Hallelujah. Four, Hallelujah. Three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. Hallelujah. I timed that one right for once. In the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, the devil hates that. Therefore, hallelujah. 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 God inhabits the praises of his people. You want to find places where the Lord has anointed people? Listen to the sound of the praise because it talks about in the Old Testament that the Lord is a warrior in the name of Jesus. Did you know today that Jesus Christ is a alive and well on the planet earth he is not dead and he is king of kings and lord of lords and he's coming back for a bride without spot and without wrinkle in the mighty name of jesus will you be with us part of that bride that is without spot and without wrinkle in jesus name i felt led before just before the service to let you guys know seems like we have some new people over here we always get new people flying by glory to god where you have landed today 
Thank you for saying yes to an invite, if that's how you have come, in the mighty name of Jesus. I am Pastor Douglas Rookie. I own the website, crossandblood.com. Been in ministry for dozens of years. By the leading of the Lord, where you have landed is a full online church service. Every Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern USA time. In the name of Jesus. We have a worldwide growing community. We pray. Pray, we worship. I seek the face of the Lord in Jesus' name to give the message and the word. I pastor people online. You have prayer requests? Chase down the place to find us through crossandblood.com. Lots we do. In these end times, technology was not made for the devil and his crowd. God allowed technology and made technology, if you will, for his kids and his crowd. We have people that that we're reaching that say on a regular basis they don't have a place to go that's on fire they don't have a place to go I'm sorry to say that they can find that feeds them some meat some people that pray with them and get together with them and fellowship with them even online hallelujah so where they go is where they get fed where they get excited where they get enthusiastic if you will enthusiasm Theo, God inside you both to will and to do of his good pleasure so if you have landed on this broadcast Sunday at 3 o'clock for the first time, you are so welcome. I don't know how to put it in words in Jesus' name. We're a little unique from a lot of the main flow, but we are Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, Scripture quoting, Bible toting, sons and daughters on fire for the living God. Hang around the river long enough, and in Jesus' name, you will catch some of the fire also. It's just how the pattern goes. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, 3 o'clock Eastern USA time, you will have an online service you can plug into for whatever you need. The hospital is open Sundays at 3 on Blog Talk Radio. We also broadcast live on Ustream. Same name, Cross and Blood. Go to Cross and Blood. You'll find out about the YouTube channels, the Blog Talk, the all kinds of ministry things we have out there. Don't want to hit you with a lot of announcements today. Today, the purpose of this meeting is to rip up Jezebel. If you do not yet know today who Jezebel is, hang on. By the end of today's meeting, you will have an idea of who that stupid lady Jezebel is in Jesus' name. We are chasing her today. And sometimes what it takes, glory to God, to chase that old woman Jezebel, who's got teeth like a lion, but they're plastic and kicked out already. Glory to God. Are you listening? church sometimes what it takes glory to God to get that woman Jezebel is some of that old-time religion is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about if you've ever been in those meetings glory to God God's doing a new wave across the earth but when you get down to the Bible hallelujah it's still prayer it's still witnessing it's still disciples it's still loving the Lord your God with all your heart all your mind all your soul and your neighbor as yourself some of those old-time Pentecost had it so today we're gonna bring at you a little bit of that by the spears give me please some of that old-fashioned religion the last time you went to a Christian gathering did you go there to hear a sermon about God or do you go to where you go to meet with God old-fashioned religion please give me some of it today in Jesus holy name oh how well Hallelujah. I remember in the old-fashioned days When some old-fashioned people Had some old-fashioned ways In the old-fashioned meetings As they tarried there in the old-fashioned manner, Amen. how God answered their prayer. On an old-fashioned meeting in an old-fashioned place, where some old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned dreams, as an old-fashioned sinner, I began to dream. 
Jesus. You know, the Bible says to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Glory to God. The Bible does not say the garment of praise is going to be put on you for you. You've got to go to the closet, find the garment of praise, and you've got to put it on. That means sometimes you've got to shake off those heavy bands and lift up those holy hands in the name of Jesus. What fell on the head of the disciples in the book of Acts was not the dove, it was the fire in the name of Jesus. What it takes sometimes to shake off some of that religion, to shake off some of that junk of the world, just getting up and going through some places, is you've got to reach out. You've got to put on the garment of praise. You've got to stir up the gifts of the Spirit. You've got to lay hands on your own head sometimes in Jesus' name and say, think right, be right, and do right in Jesus' name. Glory to God. For those of you guys over over there on Ustream. You may have seen me putting the phone to my ear. I am not doing two things at once other than just doing a sound check in Jesus' name. Normally I just hide that from you guys, but we're kicking religion. We're bringing it raw. We're bringing it as real as we know how today in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. I pray for every single listener right now in Jesus' name. And since the message and the spirit today is coming against Jezebel, I reach down to the roots of every ear listening now, back in generations of the people listening loud, and I speak to the Jezebel spirit and all of her little imps right now in Jesus' name, and we rebuke Jezebel at the core and at the roots now in Jesus' name. Lord, just as hallelujah. When you in the Garden of Gethsemane, hallelujah, and Peter decided to cut off the high priest's servant's ear, and the ear fell in the dust, and you picked up the ear, and you attached it back to the body. In Jesus' name, you put ears on bodies in the spirit today, so to speak, and you let your people hear what Jezebel's been doing to your church today in the name of Jesus. And you give me one, two, or three people today that are as ticked off off at Jezebel as I am, and I'll be happy, Father. Multiply it after that as you will. But we rebuke Jezebel and all the things that come from Jezebel today in the life of every listener. The poverty, the lack, the laziness, the, deter the, the discouragement, the depression in the name of Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 10 says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jezebel is one of his agents to get that done. But my God said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. That's what we pray for you guys now today. Third John 1, 2, a mantra of this ministry. Beloved, dear saints listening to me now, God wishes above all 
all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers we speak that to you now today in the name of Jesus receive the prosperity of the Lord in your soul today help us kick Jezebel in the teeth today and drive her out of your life your area and your region and and your home in the name of Jesus the son of the living God hallelujah now's the time of the service to pray if you couldn't tell in Jesus name father every listener cover them with your blood in Jesus name now Holy Ghost hallelujah that ear of the church we say that it is on the hearts of your people to hear what saith the Spirit today in the name of Jesus we put the motivation in people's spirits now to get up and to do the move to get up and to do the go forward in in the name of Jesus hallelujah you are not the tail you are the head listening to me now you are not going under you are going over sickness has no place in your life in the name of Jesus I better get to the worship and get to the message today if you wanted to call in hallelujah the number to call in to get prayer we're gonna do it at the end of the message today hallelujah unless the Lord says otherwise is area code 773 number is 897 6352 the person who's on the line the longest will be pulled up first just because of waiting if you want to watch your time hallelujah kind of time it we probably got a good 40 minutes of message pastor Doug with cross and blood we are kicking Jezebel today in the name of Jesus now the next way we are going to kick Jezebel glory to the living God is to say that when I had the physical uh, brick and mortar church hallelujah over there on chat glory to God chat is open on blog talk radio if that's where you want to come in and fellowship I can only monitor so many of them at a time we're kicking religion next bringing you into the presence of God glory to God when I had a brick and mortar church we had the place all laid out and the pulpit was on one end and the pews were all and the chairs were all lined up in one way but once every five or six months on purpose without notice or warning you would come in the church building on a Sunday morning and the pulpit would be on the opposite wall on a different wall and every single chair was lined up in a different place why because religion is from the devil and it keeps people bound in the mighty name of Jesus we've got to be able to get out of our wineskin and to be able to bring new things into us and to be bold like like the book of Acts talks about and get used to getting out of our same comfort zones glory to the living God and instead of looking at the same back of the same bald head because we're sitting in the same pew day in and day out service after service yes we know how it goes we've got to get up and we got to get moving is that not what the Lord said to Moses for the way to get over the Red Sea was you got to get the people up and you got to get them moving because Pharaoh's behind them you've got to get them moving toward their destiny and that's why we're switching it up today on the worship in the name of Jesus that's why we switch up the seats we've got to get the go on the inside of all of us we've got to be ready and willing to change we've got to be at home doing what it is that we do no matter what character we have or kind of life that we live as we're just worshiping the Lord and be ready for the Mormons to knock on the door in your neighborhood and go into high gear. We've got to be like Nehemiah, church listening now, with the wheelbarrow here and the sword here, ready to go whatever happens with guns ablazing, however the world brings it to us. So with that in mind, old-fashioned religion has a sword to it. Old-fashioned religion has something that will reach down on the inside of people. Old-fashioned religion has an anointing. Hallelujah. But if you were to come to a Toby Mac concert a couple years ago with a skillet concert that brought in 10,000 plus teenagers to a screaming, hollering Toledo Stadium up here, all raising hands, glory to God, jumping and shouting and dancing. If your youth meeting doesn't have the excitement of God and the attendance of God, maybe we need to be like Paul who said, I will become all things to all people so that I might by all means 
get in touch and grab one or two of them on the way. So if what it takes is Toby Mac to shake off those heavy bands, listen to the words of this song. Another way, still the flow from the living spirit of God. Hallelujah. Some of the words to this song. Catch the fire and let it burn within. Give it all you've got. The teenagers are the place in the name of Jesus, according to the book of Acts, that the spirit of the living God is going to flow on. They're not scared to get out there. They're not scared to be bold. Hallelujah. Toby Mac, whoopsie daisy, the pastor switched it up. Listen, we're kicking religion religion right in the teeth today Toby Mac whoopsie daisy glory like a bum I'm feeling all oh, hum I'm feeling warm like the water and my thumb started out but now we're not yeah. We had that fire like we was boiling in a pot Whoopsie daisy Whoopsie daisy Whoopsie daisy Come we're gonna catch on fire I'm feeling for a flicker Drink with the flame of hate So the thing is started out It was hot Look up and now we're not yeah. We're gonna catch a fire Catch a fire for God Come on Whoopsie daisy Whoopsie daisy Whoopsie daisy Come we're gonna catch on Whoopsie daisy Call me crazy Whoopsie daisy Come we're gonna catch on to God. That's a little bit new, but that's fine by me. I felt led just to hallelujah explain that a little bit. Glory to God. You come to this service, you'll find us playing trumpets, doing Aretha Franklin, doing old time Southern Gospel, doing Kim Clement and everything in between. Because we're a church on fire in Jesus' name. What I'm saying when I talk about religion, glory to God, God's reaching out to the homosexual today. And the church needs to be ready and willing and
and able and have the armor on and the vision on and the capacity within to know what to say and to speak when the homosexual comes in the church. The Lord's reaching out to the strippers. The Lord's reaching out to the junkies. The Lord's reaching out to the golf. We've got to be able in our church when they come in the back door. Glory to the living God. If they've got rags on and if they don't look like they've been fed, we've got to not be the people that runs the other way. If they come in and they're a little dysfunctional, those are the ones God's reaching for church. So if the kind of worship that you hear and the kind of music that they put up on their headphones when they walk down the street and when they walk in the back of your church isn't the amazing grace that you're used to, you've got to look at the heart of people and we've got to be the ones willing, even in the church, glory to the living God, to reach out to the people that the other people may not be reaching to. They're going to come in the doors, glory to the living God, and they're not going to fit the form. They're not going to fit the mold. They're going to smell. They're not going to have it all together. Their breath's going to be bad and their teeth are going to be missing, but they're going to be listening to Toby Mac Church, and we've got to be in there ready to reach out a hand and know the anointing and words to say to pick them up, because Jesus sent them in there to us church. Come on, let's get out of religion today in the name of of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I'm not trying to chase you away. I'm trying to expand your wineskin to get up and go across the aisle, to go downtown where the people are, to be the one that organizes the stuff, that brings the food across downtown and just hands it to people and say, you're a local ministry in town. Can we pray for you? My gosh, we've got 35 churches in this town. We did that for three times. We couldn't get a church to help us. Come on, religion sucks to the our people in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah, we use those words. It's okay. They're real words. Jesus was real. Glory to God. I always want to be sure to touch on announcements. And in the name of religion today, I got very few announcements. Somebody say high five today. Because sometimes we can go at them. Sometimes we switch them up. By the way, over on Facebook today, on purpose, some of you guys may have noticed. What I usually do is we go announce and say, hey, in a half hour, hour service starting, come on, here's the link. And then when chat is open, I open that up and let you all know. We just purposely did something different again just to make you wonder what pastor was up to today in Jesus name. No, we did not forget it, but glory to God. When you get a flat tire, don't let that mess up the rest of your life. Use what the devil takes like a pistol and tries to take you with and pull out two shotguns and say, no, I will put on the garment of praise. I will turn this test into a testimony and whatever comes my way, Toby Mac or Spears or whatever. If he did the chat and he didn't do the chat, I don't care. I'm coming to praise the Lord today. I'm getting my touch today at the service. I'm serving the Son of the living God today. And wherever two or more are gathered in His name, there He is. And we're on a devil-kicking mission today. Tire flat or whatever. Are you getting the spirit of this, sons and daughters of the living God? Announcements today for the cross. Yeah, we switch it up. Get used to it. Jesus did too. Just stay with him. When the boat rocks, you'll feel peace in Jesus' name. All I'm doing is challenging you to grow. All I'm doing is getting us out of the box in the name of Jesus and putting a little bit more weight on the bar and telling you to stir up the gifts. Come on in the boat with us and be challenged to grow. If where you are at and what you've been getting for month after month, week after week, or year after year, and you still haven't had any challenge, wake up and smell the coffee. It's time to get Get out of John 3.16 and the lower levels of the ark. Jesus said the word of God is 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. The word of God says that it is milk, it is bread, and it is meat. And Jesus said that healing is the children's bread. Where you are going, does healing manifest? Because if it doesn't, the Bible just nailed that you're still in milk. I'm trying to get us in the name of Jesus to climb the Levels of that ark in the name of Jesus to get us to the bread, to get us to the meat, to get us to the disciples and the demonstration of the spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus. Announcements. I will get through them.
The incorporation of the cross and blood ministry is coming. Simply doing it. Now what that means is it's going to become the full 501c. We had it before, had to let it drop when we got off of the brick and mortar and started going on the internet. We're turning it back around again. We're now becoming once again a 501c. Some of you guys are getting touched in the name of Jesus. That's the spirit of your God talking to you. Work with it. Don't shun it and put it away in Jesus' name. What fell on the head of the disciples was the fire. Catch it in Jesus' name. Incorporation for this ministry is coming. We're simply doing it correctly and not just slamming it out and getting it done. Lots of ways to get it done. Different states to incorporate. I've dealt with this stuff before. We're going to do it with excellence and do it right. It's simply not happening overnight. We got people waiting to donate money to the orphanage in Uganda. My gosh, pray for that in Jesus' name. We're not making them wait on incorporation by any means in Jesus' name. Those of you who follow this ministry, the tax exempt status is coming. That's what that means. The website, the big, huge, catch them all with the basic gospel net, John 3.16 that I just preached against, so to speak. It's good. It's the fish in Jesus' name that catches a lot of people is still coming. We put the link up on Cross and Blood on Facebook a short while ago. Go check it out. We got articles. We got kicking evolution in the teeth articles. Um, we got all kinds of videos over there. It is a hook to grab people to lead them to deeper things in the Lord. So for anybody that's paying attention to that, that is still coming. That's our third website to date coming out in Jesus' name. Last for announcements before we bring a little more worship and then some word today in the name of Jesus. Lord told me it's going to be a service today. Glory to God. I've had some brothers in the Lord praying with me on this one. Uh, pray for me, folks of the um, Cross and Blood congregation, in Jesus' name. We pray for you. I pray for myself, by the way, too. But tomorrow I'm meeting with the manager of the second largest, by statistics I understand, Christian radio station in Northwest Ohio for lunch. I mentioned this, I think, on the prayer meeting Friday. This has so much opportunity. I do not want to take advantage of the man, but he's reached out to me and said, Hey, can we have lunch? It was long story short. He said, yeah, glory to God. So I know there's something stirring on that one. Um, it's part of my Operation Andrew thing. Those of you who follow that with the ministry, if you know what Operation Andrew is, fine. If you don't, go to Cross and Blood. Look it up in Jesus' name. This man is part of my Operation Andrew, and he came back and found me. Glory to God. So please pray for favor. Agree with us for favor. Agree that the will of the Lord be done, because there's so many directions and doors that can open up with this in Jesus' name. That's the announcements, short and sweet. We want to minister to you guys today. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you, in the name of the Lord, if you don't love him, hang around long enough, he will catch you in Jesus' name. I think I put in the wrong song. How about, I know who holds tomorrow by the Oak Ridge Boys instead that fits in with our message today then we'll come at you with the word Oak Ridge boys I know who holds tomorrow his name is Jesus is his hand in yours glory to God glory to God come on Oak Ridge boys Jesus <laughs>
to the living God. Glory to the living God. Lord, I've prayed already. I know, hallelujah, I'm running fast today. Hallelujah. Uh, pull your hip boots up. We're going out deep. Pull up whatever you call those things when you go out in the river to fish. In Jesus' name. Uh, we got an A, B, C, D, E for those of you who like to take notes. It looks like we do have some new people that recognize the numbers. Like I said, welcome to the ministry of Cross and Blood. If I go fast, of which I have been accused of one or two times in the past, you this is all archived. Go click it and tick it in Jesus' name. Go back on Blog Talk Radio, hit the little pause button, hit the arrow button, listen to this as many times as you need to to catch it all. I got a lot to put into a short period of time because we're trying to get meat across the table in the name of Jesus. A, B, C, D, and E for those of you with notes. Here we go. The engines have been on. The plane is going down the runway. Please fasten your seatbelts in the name of Jesus. Letter A, the title of the message today is Jezebel. And we are out for her. Lord, I know I've already prayed. Lord, anybody that has any preconceived ideas about us, me, this ministry, or Jezebel. Lord, I know in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, 2, 3, and it keeps on going through the seven churches. One thing that you say to each of the seven churches is let hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So I decree that today on this, the land you've given me, so to speak, Father, in the name of Jesus, that there's not a listener coming in today day, Father, for a period of time or for the whole service that's going to leave the way they came. And whatever you have to say to the listeners today, Jezebel or just whatever is going on in their life, let not a person leave this service today the way they came on board in Jesus' name. Spirit, have your way today and hear and speak. Speak to your people and give us the ears to hear what you have to say, especially where Jezebel Jezebel is concerned. Open our eyes like the servant in the Old Testament, Father. Open my eyes. Open our eyes like the servant in the Old Testament that when Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes and he saw the angels around that if he had only known before who was on our side, he would have been living life a whole lot different. Open our eyes and our ears today in Jesus. Jesus name hallelujah kick Jezebel out by the roots in Jesus name letter a there is power in the Word of God Church of the Living God the Bible the basic instructions before leaving this earth the Bible is a supernatural book preachers getting some Gatorade here hang on the Bible is the most supernatural book that's ever been created. Glory to the living God. And where we're going with this as it relates to Jezebel is that the devil knows this. The devil has had thousands of years, hello, to listen and hear and study and know about the Bible, the word of the living God. I will even go so far as to say that the devil knows the word, the Bible, better than I do and better than anybody listening here does because he's had thousands of years to do everything he can to try and figure it out because this word of the living God has been beating him at every corner. Go look at the temptation that happened in the wilderness when Jesus was driven by the Spirit out to the wilderness to have the face to face with the devil the devil started pulling out scriptures left and right trying to overcome and twist the word of God and catch Jesus in his own word now thank God God always wins and he always has the victory but the devil 2,000 years ago knew the word better than too many of us today do so what I'm getting at is that there is power in the word and the devil knows this because the word has been kicking them in the teeth for so long are we listening church of the living God 
He's had thousands of years to study the Word. Now there is a force. There is a momentum. The Word itself has power to bring itself to pass. Glory to God. All the scriptures that we could quote about the power of the Word of the living God. The book of Genesis alone where God spoke and everything came into being following whatever He spoke. There is so much power in the Word that the devil himself who knows this even in the garden in the book of Genesis will do everything he can hello students of the Bible to take one or two scriptures of truth of power of anointing of momentum because he knows there's a river that flows from the throne of the living God in the realm of the spirit winds down around heaven and comes onto the earth Jesus said out of your belly shall flow Flow the rivers of living water. The devil knows there's a river in the spirit that is a mighty rushing current. Read the book of Acts and it's got power and it's got a flow and it's got a momentum. And so what the devil does in the wisdom of what he can try and do is grab one or two scriptures out of that river and go with the flow and try and redirect it. Are we listening church of the living God? Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 says that even the devil, even Satan, disguises himself as an angel of light. Hello. He knows the power of light. He understands how it touches the soul and the emotions of humans. He knows the gospel of John where the light shined in the darkness. He knows that the angels of God are ministering spirits sent forth to render service to those of us who shall be heirs of salvation. So he takes the angelic and he takes the light and he tries to put it on himself and speak lies to people. The, the devil knows the power of the word glory to God we're going toward Jezebel with this in the name of Jesus open up our eyes Lord to the power of the word so much that the devil even tries to use it and does against the church of the living God he disguises himself as an angel of light when you see the stories, for example, of the statues of Mary that talk, glory to the living God, glory to the living God. Yes, you can find it online. Glory to God. You will serve the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. You will not have any idols before me, Jesus said. Jesus says, love the Lord your God and him only will you serve. And anything between you and Jesus is an idol. There is one God and one mediator, one a mediator between God and man and that is the man Christ Jesus it's not any preacher it's not any pastor and it's definitely not the Pope the word Pope I'm sorry is not in the Bible anywhere the point I'm getting at is it is all Jesus and anything else in between is an idol even if what that is is Mary the mother of God but the devil will use that the devil can speak through things read the Old Testament in the name of Jesus and he will cause people to be deceived through the power of the word of the mother of Mary of statues of Mary for example the people will go and worship just as an example hello church we've got to grow up in the name of Jesus we've got to discern between the good and the very good and the evil and get this work of the kingdom done the devil uses the word against the church the devil will use Use parts of the word against unsuspecting, unknowing people. Glory to the living God. That's where I'm going with letter A. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Letter B, where I'm going with this is Jezebel. Before I even read scripture on Jezebel, we're on letter B. In the name of Jesus, for those of you taking notes, Jezebel, J-E-Z-E-B-E-L. In the Old Testament is a woman that really lived that was a wicked, evil queen, if that's what you want to call her. Before I even get into the scriptures, Holy Ghost, write on these words. You may want to write this down. Jezebel is wicked, number one, period. This is all letter B. Jezebel is evil, 
period. Jezebel is seductive, period. Jezebel knows there is power in her words. In the name of Jesus. Je she doesn't use the name of Jesus. That's me. She knows there's power in her words. She will produce, use her words to produce fear and expects fear to happen in the lives of the people that Jezebel speaks her words to. People are scared of Jezebel's words. Hello, the devil knows this. Come on, church. Jezebel will use her hair. Jezebel will use her appearance. Jezebel will use every trick in the book that she knows because she's deceptive. She's tricky. She's manipulative. She will catch you any way she can as long as she ends up winning the battle to control you. She is out to kill you. She may be looking at you like in the movies that we see with a painted face and a smile, but there will be a dagger on her thigh if you have crossed her in any way and you're not trying to build her up and give homage to her. She will kill you and stab you in the back the first chance she gets, no matter what her face looks like no matter what her smile says and no matter how many presents she has sent you and lifted you on high and called you something wonderful her ultimate goal is if you're not for her she you're against her and she's out to kill you we're going to get into the scripture do not cross Jezebel and not expect to have a fight because she will kill you at the drop of a hat Jezebel rules an entire region Jezebel sets up an entire territory that's what she likes that's what she's used to. That's what she's good at. She don't play little games. She likes to rise to the top. She uses false authority. We're about to get into the scriptures. Like I said at the beginning, Jezebel is wicked. She's manipulative. She's seductive. She knows her words produce fear. She knows there's power in her words to move masses of people. People will kill other people at in the name of religion at the sound of her words. And she will use all the false authority that she can get her hands on to get her purposes accomplished in Jesus name now under letter B what you just got so to speak if you wrote that down and you don't get anything else out of the rest of this message today please listen and get in your spirit everything I just said about Jezebel under letter B Jezebel is not friendly is not nice and is not a spirit you want to play with in any way and if you see smell hear taste or even get a whiff that Jezebel is around that's the time to get around some praying people that's some time to cover yourself with the blood. That's the time to put on the warrior spirit in any church region or area that you are at. Because Jezebel ain't playing games. And Jezebel is and has been for keeps sent out by the devil himself to kill, steal, and destroy. What I just told you about the character of Jezebel was worth the price of admission to the service today. Please take note in Jesus' name. Part 2 under letter B. At the core of Jezebel, what Jezebel is all about, if you wanted to name what Jezebel is and what Jezebel does by plain teaching of the scriptures, the scripture simply explains glory to the living God. And the Lord likes to use symbols and types and shadows from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation. Glory to the living God. In the Old Testament, when the Israelites were commanded to have a lamb that was without spot and without blemish, we all know and we learned in Sunday school that that lamb in the Old Testament is the living lamb in the New Testament. John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, The Lamb of God, behold! In the Old Testament, Noah's Ark was a type of the safety that those called and chosen and obedient walked into them. Now Jesus is the name and the place and the Ark of Safety today. The end and the shadow and the types are all throughout Scripture. Another type and another shadow. Glory to the living God is that in the Gospels, we, the people of Jesus, are the sheep. 
but in the epistles from the book of Acts to the book of Re Revelation. We are no longer ever called sheep, sons and daughters of the living God, but we are now the bride of Jesus. Anytime you look it up and study it out in Scripture, anytime you see a woman mentioned in the Scripture, just like the symbology of the Lamb, just like a donkey represents the prophetic, looks like just like an ox represents apostolic, and the symbols that we can all go through, the names of the tribes of Israel, the colors throughout Joseph's coat. Come on, Sunday school teachers. Every time you see a woman in Scripture, it represents the church in some form or fashion. It is the bride of Christ in the New Testament. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus lays his hand on the 12-year-old girl, and by the power of the Spirit, says, Talitha Kumai, and what the world said was dead. Jesus says, no, she's just sleeping. Wait till I get my hand on her. That little 12-year-old apostolic number girl was a type of the church. And when the woman in Matthew chapter 9 pressed through the crowd and said, I don't care what it takes in the name of Jesus to get to where my miracle is. I've spent it all I know on the physicians and there's no power there. I'm going to press through and just get a bit of what that man has. And when in Matthew chapter 9, the woman, the church, pressed through and made a point of contact, the miracles happened. And so in the name of Jesus, Jezebel, the woman in the Old Testament, at her roots, is a type of the wicked church, a type of the lazy church, a type of the high and mighty church that we're about to find out. Look at the warrior Jehu with a painted face up in a tower and says how goes the battle but isn't willing to get down on the field and have anything to do with the battle. We've got to get out of the Jezebel tower and we've got to get with Jehu on the back of the horse and go and preach this gospel and demonstrate the power of the spirit of the living God. Jesus' biggest problem with the Pharisees was he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello over there on chat in Jesus' name. Jezebel stands for a type of the church that we want to run from in Jesus' name. In every sense of the word. It might be said that Jezebel stands for religion and not relationship. Paul said the kingdom of God consists not in words, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That kicks Jezebel in the teeth in the name of Jesus. The religion of the day is a lot of flash. Jesus is not about the flash. He's about the substance in the name of Jesus. I want to make sure I'm covering my notes in the name of Jesus, and it looks like we're doing good. Glory to the living God. Those who follow Jezebel will end up in the place, same place that Jezebel ends up, and you don't want to go there in Jesus' name. Let her see. We're going to hop on over to the book of Revelation, chapter 19 in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 20, starting with verse 19. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Oh, hallelujah. No, that's what it is. Revelation chapter 2. I kept on crossing notes over it. We're just simply going to the letters of the churches. Got lots of notes here. <laughs> in case you couldn't tell. Revelation chapter 2, starting with verse 19. Revelation 2, verse 19. We are on letter C in the name of Jesus. He's talking to the churches. The book of Revelation. Hey, how do we live these times we're coming on at the end of the book? Church, listen how Jesus says. To the angel of the church in Thyatira. Now verse 19. I know your works, your love your service and your faith and your patience and your works that you've done now in the latter part have been even greater than the first. However, I got something against you, says Jesus to the church. 
You are allowing and permitting that stupid, lazy prophetess, glory to God, called Jezebel, by name, he calls her out, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to go off and do stuff with other stuff than my spirit, says Jesus. Stop tolerating Jezebel in the end time church. You read the whole book and Jezebel's character comes out in the book of Kings, but by the time you get to the book of Revelation, Jesus says she's still alive. There's a spirit of Jezebel that needs to be killed in those that call themselves sons and daughters of the living God. Jesus says that we're permitting the woman Jezebel, she calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, committing fornication and to participate in things that are going on with idols. Glory to God. I want to go on to verse 23. I gave her space to repent, time to turn around, but she did not want to turn around. Behold, pay attention, I'm going to cast her into a bed, and those that commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, unless they that are participating in her deeds repent as well. Verse 23, and everything that she produces, all of her children, I will kill those children with death. This is the word of God, Jesus in red letters and all the churches are going to know that I'm the one that looks at the heart that looks at the motive that doesn't listen to the excuses but knows what the church has been doing glory to God and I'm going to give to every one of you according to your works behold I say unto you but I say unto you hallelujah I just wanted to read through verse 23 glory to God glory to God Jesus nails Jezebel and says, don't have nothing to do with the woman Jezebel in the book of Revelation. Now let's find out who this Jezebel woman is going to 1 Kings chapter 18. If I was in my brick and mortar church, I'd raise my hand and say, is anybody getting anything out of this stuff yet in the name of Jesus? Are you getting something church in the name of Jesus? It's okay to have fun in church in the name of Jesus. We're introduced to Jezebel by name in 1 Kings chapter 18 starting with verse 1. 1 Kings 18 verse 1. It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Go show yourself to the king of the region Ahab. I'm about to bust some rain out where you are Elijah. Woo, glory. That'll preach. Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. He was obedient. And there was a sore famine in Samaria. It may look like it's dry, church. It may look like where is the revival promised? When we take care of the Jezebels, there's rain coming behind the tearing down of Jezebel, church of the living God. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord, for it was so when Jezebel killed, cut off the prophets of the Lord. Hello, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Let me let you know right now that in the hallelujah, in the Greek and in the Hebrew, the word prophet simply means someone who speaks forth the word of God, someone who speaks forth. So although you listening to me now may not be called in the full office of a prophet, if you are a scripture quoter, you are speaking forth the word of God and Jezebel has your name on her list. She does not want you around her region. So you aren't going to duck out of it. Jezebel right at the beginning killed a bunch of the prophets of the Lord in the name of Jesus no matter where you are and what you are if you call yourself a Christian a Jesus follower Jezebel has got your number she wants to kill you if you're quoting a single scripture out of this book because all you are doing is speaking forth the definition of what a prophet is in Jesus name 
Jezebel especially kills prophetic to go into this a little deeper. The devil will let you go ahead and have all the potlucks you want. But when new people walk in the front door of your church, don't you dare bring them up front and prophesy over them the words of the living God and read their mail to them. Because surely the book of Corinthians says they will know God is among you. That's one of the reasons the Jezebel spirits hates and kills prophetic anointed ministry that's why we as the church of the living God have to like Paul says seek to prophesy accurately and correctly according to decently and in order and let it be judged after we speak it like the book says first Kings 18 Jezebel will kill the prophetic in any form or fashion she can see it in front of her first Kings chapter 19 we're talking about Jezebel first Kings chapter 19 glory to God glory to God verses 1 through 3 Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. This is the part in the scripture, glory to God, where Elijah goes off and whoops up on Jezebel's prophets. Kills, I think, about 300 of them by calling fire down from heaven that can be seen, hello, for a shadow and a type. Where you go do they call fire down from heaven in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Elijah had just called fire down from heaven that killed the prophets of Balaam in the name of Jesus. The prophets working for Jezebel. 19 verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah and said, So let the gods do to me, Elijah, and even more. If I do not make your life, Elijah, as the life of one of those prophets you just killed by this time tomorrow, I'm running out for you, Elijah. Verse 3, And when he, Elijah, saw that, he arose, and he ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. I said at the beginning that when Elijah speaks, she expects fear to happen wherever she speaks. She knows there's power and momentum in her words. We've got to study the book and understand that the pray and preach and prophesying spirit and man of Elijah that just called fire down from heaven. How's that for the demonstration of the kingdom of God? Heard the words of Jezebel saw them, if you will, in his spirit and started running. Jezebel is used to kicking high kickers around. She's used to going out for generals. She's used to ruling a territory. She's not used to getting no for an answer. She don't care if you just kicked up on the devil. She don't care if you just had wheelchairs come out of the of sickness come out of wheelchairs. She don't care if cancer just dropped off of people. She's still got your name and she She's still got your number and she's still going to speak to you and expect you to run from her. That's her spirit. That's her anointing and the devil uses it and rides right in that shell of what I'm going to call Jezebel. Jezebel has power in her words and it shakes even prophets who are listening and moving in the power of God. Can you say fasting and prayer church of the living God? We're teaching today in in Jesus name God's not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind God did kick up on Jezebel but we've got to keep on preaching it and reading it to find out how glory to God Jezebel is established up in the region glory to the living God Jezebel can take out the low level Jezebel is running for the high level she don't care what your rank in the spirit is she don't care what your title is or how many degrees you got behind your name she will take you captive throw you in a prison and kill you like Herod beheading John the Baptist at the first shot she gets she don't care what your name or your ministry is we've got to pull Jezebel down in Jesus name we're getting to the scripture on how to do it. 1 Kings 21 in Jesus' name. 
1 Kings 21, reading verse 1 all the way through 14. There's a lot in this part, in Jesus' name. 1 Kings 21, glory to God. And it came to pass that after Naboth, minding his own business, the Jezreelite, she's got her name all over, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. If you're close to Jezebel, run. And Ahab spake unto Nahab, Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, my gosh, in Jesus' name, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it's near to my house, and I will give you even a better vineyard for it. The devil's a liar. No, he won't. That's what the devil said to our Adam and Eve in the garden. Or he didn't, the devil said, Hath not God said? Yes, he did. Shut him up right there. Or if it seems good to thee, I'll give you the worth of it in money. Nahab, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. In the book of Revelation, it says Jesus purchased an inheritance forever for you and for me. And what Jezebel does and what Jezebel's patriots do and companions and Ahab, her husband, in, in conjunction with her in false ministry, is wants to take your inheritance, wants to take you away from your name ring being written in the Lamb's book of life and you stepping over in the pearly gates. And this is written as a type and a shadow that Jezebel's going out and Ahab's trying to take your inheritance from you. And simple Naboth is saying, no, Jesus purchased it for me. The Lord forbid I give up what Jesus purchased for me on the cross. No, I'm sorry. I cannot give you my inheritance, Ahab. And Ahab came into his house very heavy and displeased because of the word that Naboth the Jezreelite has spoken to him because he said nope I'm not giving you my inheritance in Jesus name he laid his face down on his bed and would eat no bread but Jezzy came along glory to God and she said unto him why are you so sad Ahab that you're not even eating bread and he said to her because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite give me the vineyard the devil wants your fruit the devil wants your wine of joy the devil wants your love your joy your peace which is your strength don't give it to him in the the name of Jesus. I will give thee another vineyard for it, he, uh, Ahab said. And he answered, I ain't giving it to you. And Jezebel, his wife, comes on the picture, glory to the living God, and says, aren't you in charge of this region? Don't you have a lock on it? Haven't you looked at what we've been doing so far? Arise, eat some bread, let your heart be merry. I, says Jezebel, am about to get you that inheritance. I'm about to take away their joy. Hello, you ever been in a religious church of the frozen chosen? You ever been in a church where there's no power, no thump, and no happiness? Welcome to somewhere that Jezebel has taken the vineyard. Hello church, are we listening? Jezebel says, I'm going to go get you the vineyard, hubby. And so what she does is she write letters in Ahab's name. She is not the king. But she takes his ring and she uses false authority to get her will done. She uses governmental authority to get her will done. She steals, she manipulates, she twists, and she seduces to do whatever it takes to take your inheritance and to take your vineyard. Hello. She uses letters in the king's name, seals them with his seal, and sent them to elders and nobles that were in the city around Naboth. And the the devil does the same things, sending his demons out. And she wrote in the letters, acting spiritual and acting religious. Hello, church. Proclaim a fast. Put Naboth up on high. Go ahead. Give him some praises. Let him know he's taught well in the Sunday school. Let him put a little badge on his chest. Get him all set up. Get him feeling good and get him feeling comfortable. But after you, go ahead and give him false praise. Yank the carpet out from underneath him. Glory to God. And set two men, wicked ones, before him to bear witness and say, you blaspheme God and the king. Carry him out and kill him, says Jezebel. And the men of the city and the elders of the nobles, who are inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had said unto them, as was written in the letters which she sent unto them. I got to put a pause right here. 
when religion sends you a letter and it's from Jezebel, don't you dare open it, Pastor, in the name of Jesus. Sister out there listening to me now, when the devil comes across the top of your wall and says, you don't need to pray, and the letter looks nice and smells of perfume and says, go take that hour with Oprah. Haven't you relaxed enough? That's the time to tell Jezebel, sorry, return to sender. When the Jezebel spirit sends you a letter, anybody listening to me now, do not open any letters from Jezebel, no matter what form and what fashion they come in, because if you do, their purpose is to kill you. Don't even open the letter letter in Jesus name when you're online and you see temptation come up in Jesus name close the letter when you're on Facebook and Jezebel rears her head close the letter when you're out doing your own business and Jezebel says do this and do that close the letter and send it back with the blood of Jesus written on the top of it I'm sorry Jesus purchased an inheritance for me and I'm not not playing your game I'm living and serving God go take your own letter and go do what you want with it I'm not opening or listening to your letters Jezebel no matter who you are in the city or how high you think you are anybody in Jesus name let him who thinks he stand takes heed lest he fall the scripture says they proclaimed a fast. All that was from that. And they set Naboth on high among the people. And they came in, sons of Belial, and said they witnessed against him in the presence of the people. Naboth blasphemed God and the king. They carried him out of the city, stoned him with stones. That Naboth died. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Nabal, I mean, um, Jezebel will do everything she can to work her way into governmental positions. To work her way into authoritative of positions. She will use all the false authority that she can get her hands on to do anything she can to kill anybody who's got any fruit demonstrated anywhere in her region or anything that she's trying to take control of. When Jezebel sends you a letter, for God's sake in the name of Jesus, close the letter and send it back to her. Mark it postage unpaid and stamp the blood of Jesus on top of it. Jezebel is out to kill you. Naboth minding his own business because there was not things going on around him to protect him. Where was the church of the living God? Naboth died in the cause of just being a Christian because Jezebel killed her. Jezebel is out to kill you in Jesus name. Letter D we're in 2 Kings. Hang in there with me. Glory to the living God. Lord, the people that have been sitting still for an hour, let them get up and shake off those heavy bands. Let them get up and shout a hallelujah. Let them get up and shake their head sideways. We're coming in on Jezebel completely in the name of Jesus now. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 9. 2 Kings chapter 9. We're feeding it to you best as we can in Jesus' name. Elijah coming on at you in the spirit. In Jesus' name, uh, verse 16, 2 Kings chapter 9. Glory to God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Verse 16 of chapter 9 of 2 Kings. Jehu rode in a chariot and went to where the religion was. Jehu, the warrior we're going to find out of the Lord was running in a chariot using the vehicles that was available to him at the time to go with the name on his list called Jezebel and say, I'm sorry, you've been doing the damage to the kingdom of God a little too long. We've got your number now, and now we know what it takes to pull you down. You've been ruling too long. And Jehu got in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram was there. Joram was an enemy of of the Lord. And Ahaziah king of Judah came down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel. Hello watchman in the church. And he spied the company of Jehu as he came. And he said I see a company. Glory to God. And Joram said take a horseman and send him meet them. And let him say is it peace. I want to pause here. Religion will say let's 
Let's have peace. Religion will always say, why can't we compromise? Religion will always say, why do you want to make a fuss and say it's Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus only? Why can't we make just all one faith? Why can't we all just get along? Why can't we just have peace and worship nature and sing Kumbaya? Because there is a name under heaven and there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and it's not the name of peace it's not the name of Harry Krishna it's not the name of the Baptist it's not the name of the Methodist it's the name of Jesus and the angel in the book of Acts looked at the church and he said go out to all the people and preach this message of the gospel that the veil's been torn down and it's through the name of Jesus that we must be saved. The emissaries of the devil and the emissaries of religion and the emissaries of Jezebel will always try and make you look bad in the eyes of other people and saying you're too fervent for the Lord. Why are you always witnessing? Why are you always praying? Why are you always on fire? Why are you always in such a rush to get the work of the kingdom done? Why can't you just calm down? Why can't you just go sit by the fire? Why can't we discuss it? Why can't we compromise? Why can't we have peace, says Zimri? And this is the answer of Jehu. Are you listening? This spirit is the spirit that pulled Jezebel down, which killed a hundreds plus prophets of the Lord. Are we listening, church of the living God? So there went one, verse 18, on horsemen to meet him, and said to the, said the king, is it peace? And Jehu said, what do you have to do with peace? You don't understand peace. Peace can only come on the sin-sick world by the blood of the Son of God named Jesus. What do you have to do with peace? Turn behind me. And the watchman said, the messenger came to them, but he's not coming again. Then the devil sends out, verse 19, a second one on horseback which comes to them and says, Is it peace? Glory to God. And Jehu answered, What have you to do with peace? Turn you behind me. And the watchman said, He came to them and he's not accepting the compromise of peace. He's out to kill every devil in front of him. He's on a mission from the throne of God. He's not accepting the compromises of peace. He's actually going out and doing the work of the kingdom and he's about to come here where we're at and chop your head off glory to the living God and Joram said make ready there was something I wanted to glory to God there's some part in here where it says, how can there be peace when your mother, glory to God, Jezebel is spreading her false lies all over the place? What do you have to do with peace? Turn around behind me. And the watchman said, the driving, hallelujah, to the man he was talking with is driving like the drive of the son of Nimshi, for he's driving furiously. David in the Old Testament, when he was looking at Goliath, the God that was on the inside of David, was far bigger than the giant that was in front of David. And David said, you come to me with this little spear and a slant of stone, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and the lion that has already gone down before me and the bear that has already gone down in the strength and the armor and the anointing of the Lord is about to get you to Goliath. And the scripture says David did not play mealy mouth with it, but he ran toward Goliath and the driving of the chariot of Jehu was a furious drive toward the enemies of the Lord hello cancer hello glaucoma hello anything that's opposing the kingdom of the living God we've got to drive furiously at the gates of the devil Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against the church we've got to drive against them and not wait for them to come to us. Joram said, verse 21, 
make ready. His chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu and met him in the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, is it peace? Why can't we get along? Why can't we compromise? So long as the whoredoms, there's that scripture I was looking for, of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so so many no, we cannot have peace as long as religion rules in the land and Jesus is not king in your hearts. So Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jeroboam but Jehoram between his arms and the arrow went right through to his heart and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar his captain, take up, cast him in the portion of the field, glory to the living God of Naboth the Jezreelite. I remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden on him. We've got to be out putting our foot on the neck of the devil with an attack attitude. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of confidence, love, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. I'm going all the way to verse 33. I was making sure I was on track here. Glory to God. Surely I have seen yesterday, verse 26 of 2 Kings chapter 9. The blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, says the Lord. I will require it of you in this place, says the Lord. The word of the Lord always comes to pass. Now therefore take him and cast him into the plot of ground, according to the word of the Lord. Jehu has taken care of the little devils, the little demons, the little servants of Jezebel in her kingdom, but he is not done yet. Verse 27. And when Hezekiah of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house. Jehu followed after him and said, Get him also. They did so at the going up to Gur. They followed the devil. They didn't let him run, which is, oh, hello. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in a grave. Verse 29, in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. Verse 30, coming down to where the rubber really meets the road, so to speak, in Jesus' name. 2 Kings 9, verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard it. She knew what was happening in her region. She painted her face. How many stained glass windows does it take to look good before we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't tell me Jesus healed yesterday. Show me he heals today. Don't paint your face. Do all kinds of pretty poems. Four points and a poem. Don't give me a big plot of land and the biggest places and buildings and cathedrals in the city. But don't tell me and show me Jesus heals and changes lives today. I don't care how pretty your face is. I don't care how painted it is. Jezebel is in trouble and she knows it. Now she's being manipulative. Now she's trying to make you feel guilty. This is the same Jezebel that one book ago killed hundreds of prophets in cold blood because they stood against her. And now she knows she's in big trouble. So she's pulling out all the religious stop she can. She's hiding behind a painted face. Are you listening? Don't let the painted face fool you. Are they doing the work of the Lord? Is the spirit of the living God present? Is the Lord following his word preached with signs following? It ain't about the tower. It ain't about the prayer cloth. It ain't, glory, we do that in this ministry. It ain't about nothing that's pretty on the outside. Is there the punch on the inside that demonstrates the living God, the problem Jesus had with the Pharisees? The painted face, don't get it. And she put up her head and put up her hair and looked out at a window. And we see later that Jehu is looking up at this window. Glory to God. She will rise herself up at a place to look down even. And once again, my chair is falling out here. Jehu entered in at the gate. Hold on, hold the phone. Every time you see the gate in the Old Testament, that's the place of business, church of the living God. Glory to God. Ruth and Boaz did business at the gate.
Jehu, the scripture tells us, went to the gate. And it points it out in scripture. Because if we're going to get rid of Jezebel, we're going to do it when we get down to business. Church of the living God in the name of Jesus. Jehu is at the gate. And once again, a hallelujah. Jezebel is putting out that best thing she knows how and throwing it out there in front of her once again. Is it peace? What are you doing going around trying to kill your master, trying to kill the demons? Is there really spiritual warfare going on? Yes, there is. She's trying to put it out there again. And Jehu lifted up his face to the window and said, Who's on my side? Glory to God. Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down looking up at the tower. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. What it's going to take to take the spirit of religion out and down, church listening to me now, is a willingness in the body of Christ to go out to the devil, to get out of the four walls of the church, and to go to where the sinner is, to go out there on the highways and the byways, and whatever it takes, pray prophesying, preaching, getting on the rooftops that are available, going out to where they are to do the kingdom work of the, of the living God and to tell cancer no, to tell diabetes no, to tell discouragement no, to go at the gates and to do the work of the Lord. And if it takes a little bit of scars, hello warriors, if it takes a little bit of wheelbarrows and swords at the same time when cancer rises up or when a king that is working for for Jezebel rises up, we're willing to do what it takes to kill the king in the spirit. What I'm talking about is the works of the Lord. We've got to get the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. What it will take to get Jezebel down is to first get the momentum of putting cancer under the feet in public display where everybody knows it to the people on the street. They don't need to hear about Jesus. They need to see Jesus. And when we've taken care of the battles out in the field and we come back to where Jezebel is hiding with her last ditch efforts, looking all pretty and painted, calling down to Jehu, saying, how goes the battle, but not willing to lay a finger out to do anything thing to finish the battle and to actually take care of the poor, take care of the homeless, heal the sick and raise the dead. Glory to the living God up in the tower. What it's going to take is calling out in prayer like Elijah did on his knees seven times to the spiritual atmosphere up above a region. And the eunuchs have never had a woman and it takes two of them out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every fact shall be be established and after we've got the lion underneath our feet church and after we've got the bear underneath our feet church we can look at Goliath and we can look at Jezebel and say you're going down to we call it out in holiness we call it out in purity we call out to the spiritual realm in prayer and fasting and intercession that even religion that has held sway and false authority for too long and killed those who prophesied in the name of the Lord, you now, Jezebel, are coming down, and the blood, the life, will now be manifested. The life that was in you, killing the prophetic, is now spread out all over for the world to see. You now no longer have any power or sway in this area because of the warriors and the momentum of those in the kingdom doing kingdom business, calling out to those purity, impurity themselves, Take care of the religious demons up in the air in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's Jezebel in the name of Jesus. We've got a half hour left in the broadcast. I pe see people going all over chat here. Glory to God. I could give you so many examples. We have a letter E and a letter F to get to. I want to get through letter E quickly. If you want to call in for prayer, 773-897-6352. If you don't get to call in for prayer, you didn't want to call in, you wanted it to be private, just look at crossinblood.com. Find all kinds of contact info there. Find out who we are, what we're about, some of the stuff we can do to minister to you. In reality, I wanted to bring this home. 
unfortunately I could give you so many examples of religion we would be here for probably dozens of years glory to God religion is not reality reality walks it out presses through and presses for the higher levels of the kingdom I just want to tell a story glory to God there's two stories for sake of time I'll tell one then we'll get to letter F glory to the living God we'll see how it goes what this means in practical where you are at glory to God hallelujah I'm listening to my spirit there's two stories here glory 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 yeah I'll nail it thank you Lord I was out witnessing with a friend one time in our community we had tracks in our hand we, were, we had a designated area we were going in we're gonna put tracks up in laundromats meet people on the street pray for them on the street just going out by faith having prayed beforehand we were out witnessing trying to win people for the Lord in our local community me and a college buddy I have friend over here in the area I'm giving you a live example of religion I feel like something's coming up in my spirit so I want to be sure I put it over here glory to God writing a note glory to God preachers listening to his heart in Jesus name I'll tell that story Lord Jesus name um we were out witnessing and long story short we were up at this one place where there was a storefront. Glory to the living God. I'm giving you an example of religion rearing its ugly head and what it does and how it kills people and how we need to see it, hear it, speak against it and, and walk in love and, and love the sinner but hate the sin and realize it gets in those in the church even. And one of the biggest things we as pastors and leaders have to do is continually be pushing religion away because it gets us in ruts. It gets us in religion. It gets us in dead works and God is not a God of the dead God's the God of the living we've got to be always moving forward or we're going backwards church and we we're out there witnessing me and a friend and we came across this sign of this ministry and my friend said that he knows of this ministry and they reach a lot of teenagers so we opened the door and this long hallway glory to God we have to go all the way down to the back of the building glory to God and there's this door that's completely covered that you can't see inside and you don't know what's going on we leave literature and as we're leaving literature the people inside hear us are you listening and they come out and they say hi and so my friend knows the pastor because he's met him because he's been to his service and he remembers my friend so we start talking long story short I'm showing and demonstrating religion and its ugly head to you now glory to God and my friend introduces me as a pastor in the area I start talking with this pastor he says where's your church south end of town his is on west what's the name of your church yada 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 buddying it up with me like we're best friends and we have haven't seen each other in years this fellow pastor who I'm not naming on purpose in this town shakes my hand what's your contact number we have to get together we're, we ourselves were a new church in there been around about a year we're growing we're outreaching we're doing things at Walmart he likes hearing this he's my best friend then I say to the man the pastor who's got 10 kids behind closed doors at the back of a building of a strip mall glory to God in the four walls but not going out you know we are out witnessing right now for the Lord we actually were just praying for somebody on the street I didn't say this we just been praying for somebody on the street right in public on the street imagine that the book of Acts glory to God and I explained to this pastor that we have some evangelistic outreach coming up in street in the town is there anything that you would like to do to help participate in that and some of you guys listening to this broadcast now know exactly what I'm talking about and you would have shake your head and say oh my gosh help him Jesus but everything closed down like that everything turned 180 degrees like that it's okay to get together with fellow pastors it's okay to stay behind four walls and to talk about and to keep on feeding the same fish and the same sheep over and over and over the same regurgitated word over and over with no weight on the bar and no growth and no challenge and it's okay to get together with lunch and it's okay to send my church to your church and go over here but God forbid we go out together behind the four walls of the church and go to someone that just simply needs to know that Jesus loves them and have someone say that to them in demonstration of boldness and of faith the word bold is in the book it acts like crazy the people People were looking at the boldness of Peter and John and that's what caused them to recognize those people had been with Jesus and I'm not kidding this man who was a pastor who has a church a 
established in the area for the last 10 years and has a name among the community. The second I said evangelism on the street in any form, shut everything down, put the paper in his pocket, shut his eyes, his face changed, his everything changed. He was frowning. He didn't want to know me. He didn't want to communicate with me. It was a 180 and he had to just immediately, he was fudgeting and fussing and didn't know how to get out of it. And after a little bit of fussing and fudgeting and keeping his eyes down, walked back into his congregation, didn't even say bye and closed the door behind him. Religion in its purest form. It's not okay to stay behind the four walls. We've got to get out there and get the lowly, get the homeless, get the people, the drugs and the goth and anybody that we can preach to. They're hungry in Jesus' name. And then I've got to also preach, glory to God, because it came up in my spirit. I won't preach the other story. We've got to not be scared, glory to God. In this town, there's 40-some, hallelujah, hallelujah, how much trouble do I want to get in? Glory to God. In this town where I live, in northwest Ohio, there is one Mormon church and there is one Jehovah's Witness church. I, on a regular basis, see the Jehovah's Witnesses out there knocking on doors more than I see the other churches who are far outnumbered in this that say the Bible is the true living Word of God. Literally what I'm saying is that one of the things that we as religion, as non-religious, non-religious people can do, glory to God, is to go out and be the ones that bring in the Jehovah's Witnesses and bring in the Mormons. You go to them and you go knock on their door and you say you want to and get armed up and get people with you and get people praying. Be the bold one that goes to sit down at McDonald's and meet with the pastor of the Jehovah's Witnesses church in your town. They will sit down and they will meet with you. Be the one that converts, that stays doesn't stay in religion and doesn't stay behind the coffee house and doesn't stay for the retreat and the potlucks, but go out and when the Mormons knock on your door, bring them in and start telling them about Jesus. When the Jehovah's Witnesses knock on your door, bring them in and start telling them about Jesus and follow behind them and tell other people about Jesus and go knock on the door of the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons churches in your town. They know what it is to witness. They know what it is to bring people and go there armed. I just felt led to talk about this today. Go there in prayer and see the ones you can bring to the Lord. You can show them stuff out of their own book with simple 101 Sunday school scriptures where their own books are wrong. We've got to not be timid and stay in religion. We can go get them, those Mormons and those Jehovah's Witnesses if we just sit down, get out of religion, and go get where they are. That's my other story that came up in my spirit. Letter F, and then we'll get to anybody that needs prayer. We are so low on time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Letter F. I, oh, hallelujah. 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 No, I'm talking about letter E. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, we'll do letter F. What religion is, is how many potlucks have you had in your church compared to prayer meetings? Glory to God. You know what you produce? You produce what you are. I know it's hard to get prayer meetings going. I'm a fellow pastor. I know it's hard to get people. Reach out and keep on reaching. The Bible says the word of the Lord is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. I know what it is to have all these programs come up and options. It's okay to go to the nursing homes. But how many times have you had the same marriage encounter over and over and over again to teach the people of your congregation and the husbands that they need to love their wives and the wives they need to love their husbands? If you've been teaching that the same same stuff to the same people for the 10th thing in a row and you haven't had an outreach in 10 years it's time to switch it up yes have some classes for the new ones yes have some classes for the stuff you need to teach but if all you ever do is marriage encounters and potlucks and fellowships but you're not going out of the four walls of the church you need to check the religion at the door it's the end times the book of Acts is coming on us Jesus is looking for those who will link arms with him and do the works of the Lord. Joel chapter 2, verses 11 through 17. Then I wanted to go to Revelation, and then we'll see if anybody wanted any prayer. Did I leave a pen in Joel chapter 2 in the name of Jesus? You guys on chat are so much fun. Glory to God. Religion, religion, religion. 
Jonah, I mean, uh, Joel, <laughs> Jezebel, in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 2, glory to God. Revelation chapter 2. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can stand in front of it? Therefore also now says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. This is the Bible. And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart, not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God. He's gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. He repents of evil, of doing evil. Who knows if he will return and repent? Study it out and leave a blessing behind, even a meat offering and a drink offering. This is where I wanted to get to. Blow the trumpet in Zion church. Sanctify a fast. Call a serious assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation let them know this is serious business assemble the elders gather the young ones those that are new and still learning let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet let the priests let the pastors let the preachers the ministers of the Lord cry between the porch and the altar let them say oh God spare your people oh Lord give not your people to reproach that the non-christians and the non-believers would rule over them and say, hey, where's that God you're preaching to us about? Weep between the porch and the altar. Are we so burdened with souls that we can't get to behind the pulpit because we're praying on our knees at the porch and the people of our congregation are seeing it before we even get there. People on chat, people know what's going on in Jesus' name. Joel chapter 2, verses 11 through 17. How long will we go on playing church and not get down to business like Jehu and be the church. Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 6. Revelation chapter 17. Don't worry about what's going on on chat over here. The Lord's on top of it in Jesus name. It's part of you know when the gospel is preached some people are mad some people are sad and some people are glad. It's up to us to determine simply which camp we want to get in. In Jesus' name. Study that one out. It's all good. Revelation chapter... I'm not moved. I don't care what's going on in chat. Yeah, I see it. I don't care. Revelation... I care, but it's not a problem. Revelation chapter 17, 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me and said to me, Listen, we got more meat coming from you. Come here, I'm going to show you the judgment of the great whore, the woman, that sits on many waters, many nations, all over the earth, okay? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with a bunch of religion and fornication. So he, this angel, the great angel, carried me away in the spirit to the wilderness. Glory to God. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. Royalty, scarlet, high in a tower, painted and looking good, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold. Hey, I'm um, Patriot Greg. You stay on this thing. We'll pray for you at the end. And the woman was arrayed by name with purple and scarlet color and um, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Her face was painted, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her adultery and fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Wanted to end there. Matthew chapter 24 says that you all know the signs. Church listening, please read Matthew 24. Glory to God. 
Jesus says one of the things that will happen where you know the signs is that the love of many will grow so cold they will begin to kill you and persecute you thinking they're doing God a favor that they're doing it in his name. Did you read about them? Did you hear about the martyrs of the saints that this mystery Babylon, the big old harlot on many waters, on many nations had already had drunk in the cup of the wine of, of what she had in her hand? Please listen church. In the book of Genesis, the Lord God Almighty looks at the devil and he calls him a snake and a serpent. Hello, listen in Jesus' name. In the book of Genesis, the Lord God Almighty looks at the devil and he calls him by name a serpent. Then by the time we get to the book of Revelation, at the end of the book, the Z, the Alpha to Omega, the Word of God itself declares that Satan, it no longer calls him a serpent, but it says the dragon, the serpent of old. From the book of Genesis to now the book of Revelation, the devil has been getting bigger. The devil's been feeding on flesh. And the word of God, they call the smaller one the snake, now calls the same one the dragon because it has grown in power and authority on the earth. I'm not preaching wrong doctrine, and now calls it the dragon. And in the book of Kings, there's a lady and a spirit called Jezebel, while in the book of Revelation, there's a great whore that looks real pretty. I'm telling you by the word of the living God that the Jezebel in the Old Testament was a feeder and a part and a, pro and a proselyte of what has now fed, we find in the book of Revelation, the great whore that Jesus says he's judging in that time in the book of Revelation. Are you listening, church? Don't feed Jezebel. Do what Jesus says in Revelation 2.20 and not tolerate her. Get pure. Get holy. Get furious for the things of the Lord. Call out in purity and holiness for Jezebel to come down. And when the enemies of the Lord come against you, get in the prayer closet. Get with those on fire. Take authority over the stuff coming against you. Take authority over the gates of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's make a bride prepared the people for the coming of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I'm preached out in Jesus. I'm not preached out, but I'm done on my notes in Jesus name. Glory to the living God. Thank you all for all of your activity in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Those who know their God shall do great exploits. My sheep know my voice, and another they simply will not follow. Glory to God. When we preach it, some will be mad, some will be sad, and some will be glad. We've got some stuff coming up here on the chat. I wanted to address it. I pray for every single person, God's remnant, measure of faith, guess with numbers, and Patriot Greg right now. Anybody on the chat and anybody listening, in the name of Jesus, everybody that knows God right now, in Jesus' name, we bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the word of God knows as the Bible is not wrong. Every single scripture is given by God, profitable for reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. If they're telling you in the schools that there's something in the book that's wrong, they're wrong. They simply haven't caught up with the book. Jesus is the way and the only way to God. You get to heaven by, hallelujah, John chapter 3, verse 16. God God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever relies on, clings to, believes in, and puts all their faith and trust in him shall not 
perish but have everlasting life. We've got lots of teaching on Blog Talk Radio, about six pages now of teaching if you want doctrine on what says the scripture on any questions you may have. We welcome all. We will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mormons, Christians, Harry Krishnas, anything. I'll invite you on this broadcast and we will discuss the Word of God if you want to and proper doctrine long as we agree to pray in the name of Jesus or let me pray for you in the name of Jesus when we're done message us we'll discuss it we're not scared of anything we got the Lord on our side if you wanted prayer number 773-897-6352 I'm sorry I preached as long as I did we're gonna try Jesus loves me quick song then we'll begin to take some callers here Jesus loves me the Kingsman Quartet then we'll come back and take the people coming up front Jesus loves me yes he does Glory to God. Come on, CD player. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Loves me. This I know. I'm cutting that off for sake of time in Jesus name we've had enough time to sit there just running out of time uh, this is we're not closing blog talk anybody on blog talk I'm closing you stream you stream pastor Douglas rookie cross and blood you need anything questions problems complaints go to cross and blood one word three words google it you'll find it on you stream alone pastor Doug signing out we've got to for time's sake and the way it logs between the two